men's 100 metres, Cathy Cook goes in this, and this time the commentator is Ron Pickering. Well, the cream of British sprinting on view in this women's invitation 100 metres, with the exception of Beverly Kinch, I think the next uh, half dozen are certainly there. Cathy Cook will know that she's got to get away fairly fast. Tall figure in blue, Cathy, our number one sprinter, of course, from Wolverhampton and Bilston. 100, 200, and flirting with 400. Well, she's still our UK record holder. And against her, well, in lane one, we've got Sandra Whitaker down from Glasgow. Shirley Thomas from Hounslow, who's running so well in lane two, wearing five. Then Joan Baptiste, and we wonder whether her legs have recovered from the uh, um, skirting she had with a 400-meter race in Brussels. She seemed uh, to take an age to recover after that. Beverly Callender is in lane four, wearing three. Then Helen Barnett in lane five, wearing six. Cathy Cook, Heather Oakes on her right, and Jane Parry right on the right. Now. Jane Parry just uh, bending down, touching her toes, celebrating a sixth successive 200 metres win for the in England schools, and really now having been an international since she was 15, the most experienced one. Heather Oakes in lane seven, wearing four. Helsinki semi-finalist, uh, coming back to something like form. But uh, Sandra Whitaker in lane one, Shirley Thomas in two, Joan Baptiste in three, Beverly Callender in four, Helen Barnett in five, Set. Kathy Cook in blue, Heather Oakes and Jane Parry. And Shirley Thomas got away well, but look at this, kathy has got a very good start. That's surprising, Shirley Thomas is chasing her, Kathy Cook is away, Joan Baptiste is third at the moment, and that's a good run, Shirley Thomas second, Joan Baptiste third, no doubt about the winner, and a very good time indeed, 11.13, and Heather Oakes in fourth, we think, but what a good start for a change. No wonder there's a big smile, and the wind was within the allowable limit of two metres per second. It was actually plus 1.8, and that time, if 11.13 is a legitimate time. And look at this. She's away from Heather Oakes. She's going to collect the fastest legal time that she's run, and within 10 metres, she's got away from Heather. She's away from Helen Barnett. Also in blue, Shirley Thomas in lane two, running exceptionally well. Then Joan Baptiste in three in the red and white, getting away from Beverly Callender. But the long legs now working beautifully, rhythmically, and tremendous Look at the V2, uh, capacity for eating up the ground. Kathy Cook gets there in first. Shirley Thomas in, uh, in second, and it may be Heather Oakes in third. Heather and Joan Baptiste running to the line. I may have done uh, Heather an injustice. Watch this. Well, a photograph to separate them, very close indeed, but celebration for Cathy Cook. She, when she knows that time of 11.13, she'll be delighted. Well, that and the Oyster Catcher Court uh, both happened a few minutes ago. Let's go live now to David Coleman. And in fact, here's Ron Pickering to bring you up to date with um, the result of that women's 100 a photograph for third place. Heather Oakes was the uh, girl that got third place in exactly the same time as Joan Baptiste, 11.42. Remember, Cathy Cook's winning time, 11.13. And then Shirley Thomas, 11.32. Then 11.42 for both third and fourth place. Kath that was Heather Oakes just ahead of Joan Baptiste. Well, now we go to the men's 200 metres, and this is the lineup. McQuaig of Scotland goes in lane one. Donovan Reed for England in lane two, already second in the 100 metres. Uh, Babali of Hungary in lane three. Storline of Norway in lane four. Cameron Sharp, the favourite possibly from Scotland in lane five. Mike McFarland running for England, who won the 100 metres earlier in lane six. Bergen of Norway in lane seven. And Kiss of Hungary, the record holder in lane number eight, the man who finished third earlier this afternoon behind McFarland and Reed in the 100 metres. I'll be going in just a moment, but a uh, quick look back at the high jump. That's Jeff Parsons, and now that attempt at the British record height. 2 metres 26, just to remind you, 7 feet 5, the second attempt. And remember, he is the British record holder, although he is a junior. 2 metres 25, 7 feet 4 and a half. He set that earlier on this season. 6 feet 8 tall, tallest member of the British team. Just composing himself. Second attempt, 2 metres 26. No. One more attempt left. Actually, uh, 
pity there, distraction with applause for the arrival of Steve Cram, who shortly will be attacking the world at two mile best figures set by Steve Ovet on this track in 1978. Steve Cram reading, leading out the runners, some 10 of them will be taking part. Meanwhile, the 200 metres. A reminder of the lineup: McQuaig, Scotland inside, and Reed of England, Babylon of Hungary, Storline of Norway in four, Cameron Sharp of Scotland in lane five, McFarland of England in lane six, in lane seven, Bergen of Norway, lane eight, Kiss of Hungary. <laughs> Just rocking slightly, he'll be the last to settle. Hey. Smooth start, away first time, and McFarlane got a very good one indeed. He got a beautiful start, but Cameron Sharp is closing slightly. It's McFarlane and Sharp still behind, and Donovan Reed in third place, Kiss of Hungary in fourth. But McFarlane clear at the moment, with Reed coming through on the inside, and Sharp's got an awful lot to do. And McFarlane has really imposed himself on the Scotsman, and he's got to win this with Donovan Reed in second place. Cameron Sharp third, Kiss is four, and McQuaig is five. And that time, 20.46, if it's a legal one, well, he really has come to fall. Just as last season, at the back end of the season, he's found his very best running. If that is a best um, a legal time, we don't know about the win, it's very close to his personal best last year of 20.43. It's certainly a season's best for a British athlete. Couple of hundredths uh, of his season's best, and a brilliant double win. Cameron Sharp going over to congratulate Mickey McFarlane, and that is, uh, is really a tremendous return to form. It's like his Commonwealth gold medal form and he imposed himself on that race from the very word go. He had a cracking start, and after that, Cameron Sharp was really in trouble. Donovan Reed was the only man that could even sense that he was running a blazing bend. Look at him there, coming off the bend. He's left the Hungarian, the Norwegian for dead. Cameron Sharp, a couple of metres adrift, even though Cameron Sharp ran the early part well, and only Donovan Reed to chase him to the line, and he really has head up, and he's going smoothly now. Not those very short staccato strides, but flowing to the line. And that's a very good double indeed for Mickey McFarlane. In fact, the wind just above the allowable limit. It's, uh, the uh, limit is two metres per second. It was 2.6, but still impressive running. Well, now back to the high jump. The third and final attempt then by Jeff Parsons, 19-year-old Scott, at 2 metres 26, 7 feet 5, an attempt to uh, further his own British record by one centimetre. The Southern champion set the United Kingdom record this season. so close and it certainly won't be long before this lad breaks the British record meanwhile though the next track event features Steve Cram champion of the world champion of Europe champion of the Commonwealth at 1500 meters but stepping up in distance to run the two miles and attempt to beat Steve Ovet's uh, world best of 8 minutes 13.51 that is the next event live on the track Meanwhile, let's look back at the men's 400 metres. Phil Brown, who ran that great relay leg last week, goes in this. Once again, David Coleman. Phil Brown lining up for England in lane number one in the 400 metres. The full uh, lineup: Brown in one, Mengsa of Hungary in two, Storline of Norway in three, Whittle of Scotland in four, Akabusi of England in five, Banco of Hungary in six, Ryan of Norway in seven, Nickel of Scotland on the outside. Phil Brown, the favourite. Hero of uh, several dramatic last leg runs for the British relay team. Hey. Very aware that the last time out he was beaten by Akabusi by about the thickness of a vest. He paid tribute to uh, Akabusi in his first international season. Well, Akabusi storming so down that back straight. 24, he's an army sergeant in and second in the United Kingdom Championship. Uh, meanwhile, Brown's run that usual uh, easy first 200 and tries to kick in the later stages. 
Akabus is storming around the top, and Brown now starting to, to make his run. The first 200, uh, Brown in 22.6. Akabusi leading, uh, Brown on the inside, also going well as Storline of Norway. But Brown closing now, has he timed it right? is still looking strong, and Brown working hard to get there, it's going to be very close. And it's almost a dead heat. It really is a very, very close indeed. But Akabusi couldn't increase pace, obviously, but kept going very, very strongly indeed. And Brown almost seemed to time that for a dead heat. He came through very, very slowly on the inside. And well, interesting to look at the slow motion on that. Akabusi thinks he's won it. But Phil Brown did dip very late indeed. The time, 46.53. There is a strong win, remember. It is behind the athletes at this stage when they're tired. But Akabusi is a developing runner, and he's getting better with each race. Now, Brown on the inside appears to be going so easily. Did Akabusi get there, or did the dip work? Oh, well, that is a job for the judges. And in fact, the dip did work. Phil Brown given the verdict. 46.53 to Akabusi's 46.55, with Storline of Norway in third place. 47.05. But the dip right on the line paid off for Phil Brown. But he certainly ran the first 200 very slowly in 22.6. And that seems to be his problem in the individual races. He's running them much faster in the relay legs when he really lets himself go. Well, now the crowd concentrating on the possibility of a new world best time in the two miles. With Steve Cram, the favourite to win. Steve, a member of the Jarrah and the Heaven Club, now 22. And what a record he's building up. No world records to its credit so far, but that fast 1500 in uh, Brussels on Friday when he was just outside the world record at 331.66. And of course the record broken yesterday in Cologne by Sidney Marie of America. The old figures at 1500 meters standing to Steve Ovet, who also holds the world best time at this event, two miles, 8 minutes 13.51, set in 1978. Well, they've got to go through the... Uh, Halfway stage at a mile and just over 4.6, so they've got to be hit uh, a level schedule of about 61.6 each lap to break this record. And the lineup includes uh, some quite well known names. It's Fairstead of Norway, Nat Muir of Scotland, Steve Cram of England, this is the way they line up, Zabo of Hungary, Anderson of Norway, Spence of Scotland, that's the applause for Cram. A rapturous welcome back to the palace. So going on uh, down the lineup, uh, Spence of Scotland, Eamon Martin of England, who we think might take it up to help Cram on the third and fourth laps. Shaz of um, Hungary, Callum is running as a guest from Great Britain, and uh, Jeff Turnbull of Gateshead. Now, I think a couple of spelling mistakes there with the fall of two British athletes, but still, they're both very recognisable figures, and I think Jeff Turnbull will be very much in the race because we understand he'll make the early pace. Sub four minute miler, uh, wearing number 10, comes from the same country as uh, Steve Cram, the Northeast, member of the famous Gateshead Club. And he was also third in the World Student Games, 1500 meters. Well, you were talking about rapturous applauses. I was privileged enough to be in uh, Newcastle and Gateshead the night this young man returned from the World Championships. and. Uh, it really was an occasion, marvellous, emotional occasion. That particular part of the country, not, not just being sports-minded, but being particularly track and field oriented, it really is a marvellous uh, cultural home for athletics. Every time you go there, every time track and field goes there, they turn out the biggest crowd of the season, and they really are a knowledgeable crowd. They've had this long tradition of producing uh, middle distance and distance runners, or really stemming from Bren Foster and one or two others like that. But he must feel that he's always got a tremendous amount of support, whoever he runs against, David. He's got this, uh, this following in the country. He's a, a new folk hero in many ways at 22 years of age. Yes, indeed. And, uh, well, if we can ever get the three together, Sebastian Coe is recovering uh, from that illness. Uh, Steve Ovet is very much recovered, but... Uh, tactically making one or two mistakes, but I'm sure he might well correct that on Wednesday in Koblenz when he attacks either the world 1500 meter record or the mile record, and you'll be able to see that, by the way, on BBC One on Wednesday night from Koblenz. Um, if we can ever get the three together, Co, Obet and Cram, what a race that promises to be. 
Stephen Cram just strolling back with Eamon Martin and uh, the whole of this crowd poised for this. Level-headed young man too because uh, when asked about world records having got all these titles he said I bet all the uh, world record holders will swap them for my titles. Uh, if they come they'll come and so he's looking forward to them but in order to come I believe they have to be stage managed. Keith Stock in the pole vault. In the bar at 5 meters 20. And that's a nice clearance. Well, that'll do uh, his confidence a lot of good. Keith Stock has had uh, so many disappointments of late. Went to Zurich last week and uh, failed his opening height. And uh, really must have, uh, his confidence took a terrible knock. Uh, everything seems to have gone wrong since uh, his Achilles injury in uh, Cosford just, uh, well, just about two years ago now. But uh, five meters 20 is a good start in this competition. And uh, he is the only man clear at that height at the moment. Meanwhile, in two miles, I see checking down there, unless I'm very much mistaken, we've got an extra runner. In fact, at the number now 11, and Julian Gota, better known as a 10,000 and 5,000 meter runner, is in this rather strangely. A bit of a short distance for him, but still he may well be uh, very, very useful indeed in terms of helping. Uh, Julian wearing his Shaftesbury colors. Wearing at number 17. And he's the 11th runner now in the race. Well, two miles. Two miles, just over eight laps of the track. All relevant time for us, the World European UK All Don't forget, we expect Turnbull at Gateshead to make the early pace and Eamon Martin to do what he can do to help Cram um, after about a mile. But certainly in the closing stages, Cram may well have to make it alone. Oh, and Ovet set the record, of course, he had a tremendous battle with Sidney Marie, the man who, strangely enough, just 24 hours ago, took the 1,500-metre record of him. One interesting point about the record is that the fastest time ever run for this distance, the all-time fastest, put him in the Belgium indoors, and that's generally regarded as the world best. They're chasing, though, the outdoor record of 8.13.51. On your mark. International two miles. And Cram has gone off very quickly himself, and so too Jeff Turnbull. And Cram looking for Turnbull on the outside, and glad to see him there. And Jeff Turnbull, number 10 from Gates, it settles down in front. Cram in second place. In third place at the moment, Eamon Martin. In fourth place, Nat Muir. Five is Julian Gota running as a guest. And don't forget, in this, we've also got part of the international match between England, Hungary, Norway and Scotland, with several runners taking part as guest artists. Still Turnbull out in front, and this early pace very important indeed. To break the record, they want a level pace of 61.6, so it'll be interesting to see what the Gateshead runner can do. Cram in second place will need all the help he can get, because it's quite windy, and conditions not ideal for record-breaking. Eamon Martin of Basildon in third place, wearing the vest of England. Nat Muir of Scotland goes into fourth. Julian Gota in fifth place. And just behind him is Zabo of Hungary. Approaching the end of this first lap, and we'll know whether the pacemaker is right in a moment, and it looks to me to be spot off. 59.11, perhaps uh, a shade fast, but it's well inside the 61.6 they need. Cram cruising in second place, and after his fast running over 800 metres and 1,500 metres, this early pace must seem very easy. Well, the early pace is critical, not, not just to be out in front of uh, all the trouble, but to be behind someone who he knows can run intelligently and wise. To have the pace too fast at the moment could be suicidal, and I wonder uh, whether the rest realise that, because I thought Eamon Martin might stay with it a little longer and Nat Muir, and uh, interesting that Julian Gota went off fairly fast, but he's dropped back into the pack again. So it really is a pace run, Jeff Turnbull, and we'll know at the end of 800 metres whether he's on schedule. He's a most experienced athlete, and Steve Cram looks comfortable behind him as Eamon Martin brings the rest of the pack along. One thing for sure, unless Eamon Martin makes a move, he's not going to be help, any help at all to Steve Cram after four laps, because he just can't go along with this early pace. Uh, just over two minutes, uh, almost two minutes one and that's uh, about two seconds inside world record or world best pace but the rest just not involved so i'm afraid 
the message already clear that Steve Cram in the last mile has only got himself to compete with apart from the clock and it's not going to be very easy Turnbull going along very very steadily 59.1 for the first lap 62 for the second uh, but the rest seem to be not involved Nat Muir is leading the chasing group Martin looking very heavy legged he's been our best 3,000 meter runner and 5,000 meter runner on the clock this season Eamon Martin but he's certainly uh, not showing anything like his true form today yes it, this is a good piece of face judgment but having said that, it was not so very long ago that the uh, IAAF, the International Amateur Athletic Federation, the governing body of, of athletics around the world, frowned on pace running of this sort. It seemed a pity because this is the way to get records if it's intelligently run. And here it is coming up to 3.04.58. They're inside the schedule. But as David Coleman was saying, what happens after four laps when Jeff Turnbull really can't sustain that pace himself? And we leave... Steve Cram exposed with a 50-yard lead and only himself to pull on. That is the toughest part of the race. It's, what's, uh, it's what has uh, knocked one or two records on the head with other athletes, and athletes as good as him. It happened in his 1,500 metres. He had nobody to pull him through the third of four laps, or three and three-quarter laps, and it's happened to Sebastian Coe and Steve Ovette in the past. It's this middle part of the race, and who do you get to help you? Anybody else that's that good must have aspirations for winning the race themselves, especially if anything happens to Steve Pratt. So at two miles, he's going to have a real problem coming up now. He's got a, the length of the straight to go when he goes through one mile, and his uh, pacemaker is likely to be faltering from then on. Well, at three laps, there were only 0.2 of a second inside the world best pace. Turnbull leading, Cram in second place. We had a lovely picture a moment ago, and there it is again, of the pain on Turnbull's face, and Cram looking very, very easy. And Cram has now taken the lead. And that was a 63-second lap, 4.07.9, uh, nearly 4.8. So Cram now has to run a solo 4 minute 5 seconds, second mile, to become the world best at 2 miles. It's asking an awful lot. This really is a solo run, and uh, the crowd are willing him and uh, doing all they can to lift him. You'll hear two sets of cheers, one down the back straight, where the Jubilee stand is bathed in sunshine, and the crowds really have turned up. In fact, they're standing on the parapet overlooking the track from all the other uh, uh, play areas around Crystal Palace. They're, they're looking over the fences from around. There's a marvellous crowd lifting him now, but it's a long, long, lonely road that he has to tread got all the courage in the world of course but uh, his mechanism his timing mechanism he doesn't push himself this hard in training he's got to know what it feels like to run 62 seconds 62 seconds and 62 seconds again and uh, to drag it out when he's on his own nobody to break the wind nobody to uh, shield him in any way he's just got to have the rapport between him and the crowd so Steve Cram goes on the gap well it's an immense one uh, Turnbull having dropped out Julian Gota leads the rest of the pack they're now some 18 meters back as he tries to lift himself and run on five laps 509.3 uh, about a second outside the world best pace but of course the bell electrifies athletes they can the ends in sight for them and they usually get well inside the minute on the last lap so he may have a little bit in the bank but if he does break uh, the world best figures of steve ovet it will be a truly a remarkable run because this is nothing more now than a time trial. 800 meters to go and it must seem an awful long way. 611.49 and he's about two seconds outside schedule. Nobody will be more aware of that uh, than Steve Cram. Julian Gota in second place, Eamon Martin is third and in fourth place at the moment, Zabo Atandre. This is where he's got uh, an awful lot of uh, discomfort because the wind is hard again. And I think you were expressing a view earlier that we, we, we really had hoped that Eamon Martin would be able to stay in, in contact. Had a very good winter, then came out and began to show real form at both 1,500 metres, the mile, and 5,000 metres. But the gap is an enormous one, and the race is still this lonely trail. Now, the family are here, the crowds are here, they're beginning to get used to these uh, time runs but really that is hurting and uh, he's so lonely and so exposed that it looks an impossible task but wonder whether the bell will give him the injection of life that he needs 
and significantly there, encouragement from Willie Banks, the triple jumper, who clapped as Steve Tram went by, shouted encouragement, uh, 7.15.38, so he's got to run the last lap inside 57, about 56, 57 seconds uh, to break the world best time of Steve Obeck. Can he do it? A long, long, lonely trek for him. And now it's just a battle with himself and the ticking finger of the clock. The world best time, 8.13.51 to beat as he goes into the last 200 meters. The stride getting slightly shorter just at the uh, swimming pool end of the ground, no supporters, but now he picks up the roar of the crowd. He's going to be close, but will it be good enough? 8.13.51 to be 40 meters left. And he's going to be just outside it, and Graham a courageous bid and then he looks down in disappointment as he's entitled to do because there was no one there to race with him or help in any way Zabo he looks back to see coming in in second place for Hungary in third place Callan as a guest fourth Eamon Marty five Nat Muir six Julian Gota and in seventh place Anderson of Norway but he has got to feel disappointed stepping up in distance like that he's found a day on which is quite windy not easy to front run and he's found no help at all I remember the night when Ovet beat Marie here in 1978 to set these figures. In fact, he and Marie had a tremendous battle. But of course, there was no one around at all to give Steve Cram the battle that he really need. Uh, to be out in front for a mile and get so close, still under lines, what a great athlete this is. Because he went through the mile in 4.6.4 and by himself ran the second mile in about 4.7. He may be disappointed at the moment, but it will not take him long to realize, just as this crowd rise and realize with him, that it is simply a matter of time in every sense. Given time, that record must surely be his. The Jubilee stand rising. really uh, massive crowd turned out once more at Crystal Palace. I will just give you the match score as he goes around and then pick up the applause as he comes back in front of the packed grandstand. England with a bigger lead now and it doesn't include the two miles match result. And now some 22 points in front of Hungary with Norway well back in third place and Scotland too. And now the welcome, the applause and the admiration expressed by this Crystal Palace crowd as young Steve Cram comes back in front of them for the last 80 metres of his victory lap. So a great run there by Steve Cram, but didn't get much help, of course, with David Coleman. Away they go, five laps of the track, and the world record, 451.4. Now, as we expected, the early pacemaker is the Australian Scammell. Very tall athlete. 338 uh, in Brussels the other night, or 1,500 metres. And he's followed by Eamon Coughlin and Graham Williamson. Now I'm a member of the Wolverhampton and Bilston Club, but of course uh, born and grew up in Scotland and now at Loughborough in third place. Williamson was injured in the Helsinki World Championships and uh, had a bad run in the semi-final. Number 16 is Steve Harris. This is a bit under distance for him. Scammell's pacemaking, vital if this is going to be right. They've got to average just over 58 seconds per lap. And it's pretty quick. Perhaps a fraction too quick. Still Scammell leading. Coughlin in second place. Graham Williamson is third. Steve Harris in fourth place. 
Yes, there was, did you notice an air of panic, David, at, at, right at the start, because the pacemaker didn't seem as if he was going to get away from the pack with 16 runners, and Eamon himself had to battle his way and wriggle his way clear until the pace settled down, and I think it was that scurry over the first 60 or 70 metres that put, uh, that cut an extra second off. They really were battling away. It settled down, there's much more uh, rhythm about it, it's more evenly paced, more economically paced now, and I think we're fine when they come through uh, at 800 metres, that they may well be nearer to the schedule that they're hoping for. Well, certainly uh, Eamon Cochran has got more company than Steve Cram had, and he's going to have most of it uh, all the way. So uh, the race should be run right for him. And um, by the way, in that uh, Steve Cram two-mile record attempt, I said that uh, Ovette had beaten Marie. I've got Marie on the brain after his world record run at 1,500 metres uh, last night. In fact, it was Rono who tested him to the world best two-mile figures. The 2 2 laps, 157.3, and that now has slowed to outside world record pace by a second. But that may not be disastrous. They've taken a breather on that lap. They're going five laps in this 2,000 metres, but this third lap now becomes of increasing importance. Scammell must not let the pace drop too much. And there's a wise old head on the shoulders of uh, Eamon Coghlan, now 30. He well remembers uh, over the past decade that twice he's finished in fourth place when he's had blistering finishing speed and that's at 1500 meters in two olympic finals and really he was disappointed has always suffered from that in between seasons he's been chairman of the boards he's been absolute king indoors in america where he reigns supreme he's the biggest crowd pleaser on the west coast of america and uh, and suddenly this season he's found his niche he won the 5000 meters in the world championships he's won the 3000 in brussels he's getting used to winning and he wants to get amongst the records as well just as he has done indoors. Well, he's got a job on his hands now because he's over three seconds outside the schedule. Or just about three seconds outside the schedule. And the key man in this whole operation now is the man who's running in second place. A committed front runner, Graham Williamson, who wasn't totally fit in Helsinki and admitted he'd missed three weeks training. He had to have an injection in his foot before his 1500 meter semi-final. But if Williamson is anything like back to form, he'll have to go early, which is what Cochrane wants because he's now got to battle it out and the last lap has got to be very quick indeed. One wonders too about the crowd. They haven't caught on to this in terms of a record attempt because they're not trying to lift him and they should. He's very popular indeed. I wonder whether they've got the information that they need that he's three seconds down and he's losing time and losing the battle with what has already been described as one of the toughest records of the book. Now they're just beginning to lift him now and to the fact that Graham Williamson is keeping him company so long. They take the bell now. And the time, 359.4 at the bell. And that means that he's got a colossal job on the last lap. It'll have to be about 52 seconds, which I would think is impossible. And I think uh, Graham Williamson is trying to win this one. He's not going to give Coughlin any help, only by pushing him from the back. And um, Williamson uh, running a weighty race, which is unusual for him. And indeed, they've slowed down so much that the other runners are getting to them. That's Graham Fell, the United Kingdom steeplechase. Uh, Tim Hutchins, is it? Yes. Uh, the uh, national cross-country champion who's coming to third place. Had a bad season for injury, but coming back. And now Graham Williamson is going to test the world 5,000-metre champion, but they're not going to be anywhere near the record. Cochran has got a tremendous kick, but here's Williamson with new tactics. And are they going to pay off? Cochran with time to switch to the outside, and he knew exactly what he was doing. Kept cool, moved out, let Williamson go, found space, and comes through to win in form 57.65. In second place, Williamson, third was Hutchings. And that is a British all-comers record, beating Stover Ovette's figures, which was set in 1978. An impressive run, but it merely underlines what a marvellous world record this is, set by John Walker. And what a racer Eamon Cochran has become. Everything he did on the boards, and of course he's the world record holder for the mile indoors, he now seems to be repeating outside. Although he's taken him a long time to get it right outside. Now when Williamson attacked, he didn't panic, he just waited, cleared his heels, switched to the outside, and the kick was decisive. Nothing Williamson could do about that, but a good run by him, and nice to see him getting back to the sort of form he showed in mid-season. So, Cochran wins, Williamson in second place, and Tim Hutchins third. The time, a new British all-comers record, 4.57.65. Just to confirm the results of the men's 110 metres high hurdles, Bakash of Hungary first, 13.67. Mark Holton, 
England 13-8-4 and Bodo of Hungary 13-9-0 in third. And now to the women's hurdles, this time over 100 metres and uh, Shirley Strong who runs in lane four. They're using lanes three to seven in this women's invitation race. Shirley Strong, what an accomplished uh, season she's had. British and Commonwealth records in the World Championships and again in Zurich last week. There's the lineup. Joel Fraser of Enfield on the inside, then Shirley Strong, Heidi Benselrud of Norway next to her, then Judy Livermore, Birchfield Harrier, the heptathlete in lane six, and Hilda Fredrickson of Norway on the outside in lane seven. Backwind down the straight. And uh, Livermore got away well, so did Shirley Strong, as one would expect, and Strong already going away, and Livermore in second place at the moment, and the rest trailing in their wake, and it's uh, Benserud in third place, but Strong going away well now, into a sprinting beautifully, Livermore in second place, Benserud in third, a time at 13.10, and another very fine race indeed. For the first time for several races, Shirley Strong didn't have the real motivation of top-class world opposition, and so the uh, main motivation came from within on that occasion. The wind speed plus 1.5, but she's showing now, race after race, that she can generate a fair sprinting pace, as well as show superb hurdling technique. She does get away now, well into the first hurdle. And the first stride off the hurdle, which is very important indeed, and that's initiated by the tremendous pull through of that trail leg. And look at the way she executes that well. Shoulders perfectly relaxed. She attacks the hurdle beautifully and runs off it and into her sprinting very quickly. Judy Livermore powering her way down into second place. And Ben Sarud, the Norwegian girl, also a top hept heptathlete, uh, came through into third place. But Shirley Strong, very much the pin-up of this event. Sprinters out for the 4x100 metres relay, in which the crack Hungarian squad are drawn on the inside. Then Norway using lane three, Scotland four, England five, England B in six, and England C in seven. Alan Wells will be waiting to receive the baton from Sammy Lee in lane three for Scotland. Meanwhile, the England team have Mickey Morris on lead, then Donovan Reed runs against Alan Wells, Mike McFarlane and Mike Power, which looks a good squad. But I remind you that the Hungarian squad on the inside are a very well-drilled squad indeed, and have run 38-8-7 this season. There's Ferenc Kish going off for them, chasing after the Norwegian. Alan Wells gets away, it's a very safe exchange from Sammy Lee. Meanwhile, Donovan Reed is away, and Wells has had a splendid leg. He's caught up on Donovan Reed and given Scotland a real fighting chance. McFarlane has tried to get it back, but he runs against Cameron Sharp. And it's McFarlane versus Cameron Sharp, and McFarlane has down a metre, and really on last leg, it's Mike Powell against Gus McQuaid. Gus McQuaid for Scotland, and this would be a notable win, but little Mike Powell getting after him, but Gus McQuaid gets away again, and Scotland have a great win there, with England B in third, Hungary. Really, Gus McQuaid, is, that's, that's a smug grin on his face, because the Scots really pulled out all the stops there. 39.56 the time, much of the damage done by Alan Wells in superb form. Gus McQuaig has a little chat with Sammy Lee, the lead-off man there. We put it together, and the Scots certainly did. Back to see the 4x400 four in a few minutes. Coming up very shortly, the 4x400 four metres relay. David Coleman. Yes, they do start in a couple of minutes' time, as you uh, may have heard earlier. Steve Ovette goes in the England C team, and England putting out no less than five teams. Uh, some 2,400 metre runners involved, and some remarkable names, as you'll hear in just a moment. People you don't expect to see running 4x400s. Uh, but in the meantime, we can have a look at the Javelin. Well, the Javelin now has reached the second round. Raoul Bradstock in second place with 77 metres 60, representing England. Been throwing well lately. Oh, and that's a good throw. It's over 85. Now, the British record stands at 85 metres and 52, and that's uh, held by David Otley, set in 1980. And Bradstock has been throwing 80 metres of late, but... Uh, Really, that is uh, a marvellous throw. It's a personal best, certainly. And uh, he really unleashed that one. Just over 85. 85 metres is 278 feet 10. And that uh, throw... Just still waiting. There it is, 85 metres and 34. 280 feet, and that's a substantial lead, and only six inches below the British record. Marvellous stuff uh, from Bradstock, and he's still got four more throws. 
While the four by four hundred meter boys getting ready to draw, Norway in lane one, Scotland in lane two, England in lane three. The first team is Akabusi, Steve Hurd, Gary Cook, and Phil Brown. Hungary in lane four. Then the England B team, that's Paul Dunn, Ainsley Bennett, Esprit of Birchfield, and Carl Hamilton of Sale. The England C team, Nigel Kitchen, Brian Dickens, Steve Avett, who got from the third leg, and Roy Dickens. And the England D team, uh, Kermit Bentham, Steve Thomas, Eugene Jilks, and Chris Thompson. And the E team right on the outside, John McCabe, Lloyd Cowan, Mark Holton, the hurdler from Wolverhampton, and Rob Harrison, the Liverpool 800 meter runner right on the outside. Steve Avett, by the way, runs in Koblenz, and a match uh, you'll be able to see on BBC television, BBC One, 10.25. When it's rumoured, he'll be attacking either the world 1500 meters record or the world mile record. We asked, uh, his advisor and England team manager Andy Norman a few minutes ago if he knew which it would be and he said that no, not yet. So Ovet, who has lost his world record last night to Sydney Marie at 1500 metres, also seen his uh, British all-comers 2000 metre record uh, go this afternoon, but he's looking for some speed training this afternoon at 400 metres, which is the real reason he's here. The England first team is very powerful indeed. Akabusi of the Army, second in the United Kingdom Championship, goes on lane one in the first uh, leg. Steve Hurd of Wolverhampton and Bilston, much improved this season on the second leg. Gary Cook of the same club on the third leg. He normally runs second and Todd Bennett third, but Bennett's on holiday. And Phil Brown, of course, who's uh, been brilliant on the anchor leg for Britain this season. Ryan Whittle is the lead-off man for Scotland in uh, lane two. Followed by McMahon, by Hislop, by Nickel. Four by four hundred meters at rebound. The first leg run in lanes and the first quarter of the second leg until they break in the back straight run in lanes so it's difficult to tell who's where until they break in the back straight England D team going well through Bentham also the England A team Akabusi also going well he made up a bit of ground on the Hungarian who's uh, closed on the England B runner who's Paul Dunn Next to the outside, this is Ben from the Thames Valley Harriers running for uh, England D. He's a good run. And Akabusi now for the England uh, A team, which will counter the match. He's also had a good run. Ben from hands over to Steve Thomas of Cheltenham uh, for the D team. But the A team now with Steve Hurd about to take the lead. And England with three teams right up there at the moment, and the fourth team goes up as well, so it's going to be very difficult to work them out. Ainsley Bennett's gone flying off there for the England B team to bring them up in the second place. The C team now have gone third, with Brian Dickens and the D team fourth, Steve Thomas. And Ainsley Bennett running a remarkable leg, closing on Steve Hurd. Um, determined to prove a point, but Hurd is very strong in the closing stages. He's a very, very big athlete indeed. He's had a good season, and he's improving all the time. He comes away, and he's timed that better. And Dickens comes through to bring the C team into second place, the B team third. The England A team, and Ovette goes away on this leg in second place, believe it or not. And it's going to be a real test for Steve Ovette. Gary Cook out in front, recognised as one of the best uh, relay leg runners in the country. Uh, and now, the B team gone past Ovette, and that's Vaughan Spray of Birchfield. Closing, or trying to close on Gary Cook, but Gary Cook's strength is strength on this one-lap event. Very upright style, but he comes cruising away again. Seems to find another gear on that top bend, and comes away again. So England A with the lead. England B in second place, and Steve Ovette's losing third place now to Mark Holtham, who's come right through for the uh, E-team. And Holtham's got a very good leg indeed. Steve Avett had to go searching for his partner, came in, couldn't find him, and in fact, they lost a lot of ground there. So it's Phil Brown for the England A-team on this uh, last leg. They're closing up very, very quickly. He's been chased by the B-team. Should be Carl Hamilton, and it is. And Brown has gone very easily indeed. Surely saved an awful lot. 
surely they're not going to allow the indignity of being beaten by the B team. No, Phil Brown comes right away. He's tempted Carl Hamilton to the B team, and nothing more than that. Battle dives for third place. And it's going to be the E team with Rob Harrison anchoring them. The A team win, the B team second, and the E team third. The time unimportant. The points mean that England have won the match undoubtedly. Uh, the time, by the way, for Steve Avedda unofficially on that third leg, 48.7. And Mark Holton, by the way, taking the lead, uh, taking the position away from him, ran 47.3. And indeed, four of the England teams there finished ahead of Hungary. And by the way, we'll be seeing Steve Ovette, let me remind you, in that world record attempt at 1,500 metres all the mile on BBC One from Koblenz at 10.25. Gone straight across there to have a word with Andy Norman, his advisor, the England team manager, a smile on his face, uh, but he certainly shook his head. Uh, I think he said to Andy, this isn't my event. It was. I think you may have explained that Mark Holton took a few yards out of him then, which came as a big surprise, as well as the established 400 metre runners. But four England teams finishing ahead of Hungary, it augurs well for the future. There was some good talent on view there, and I imagine that Steve just used that as a run out. Right, well, England won the test match.